All right, guys, today we're going to talk about a survival principle or kind of some essential survival principles that I firmly believe. And with the kind of rise or predominance of survival gurus out on the YouTube, which I guess you could consider myself even part of that uh, culture, I wanted to bring a few kind of tips and experiences that I've had when it comes to listening to people on YouTube's are on the YouTubes about survival advice. And so ultimately in this video, we're going to talk about a few things that if survivalists don't bring these things up, don't listen to them. Now, once again, you'll probably have to take this video with a grain of salt because I am one of those survival tubers myself. But by and large, I really do believe that these are a handful of things that are not stressed enough in survival because there is a large rise or predominance of wilderness self-reliance and bushcrafting that has become intermingled or basically, you know, almost in some circles has the same kind of, um, or is an interchangeable term, survival, bushcraft, wilderness, self-reliance. However, they are very different. And when it comes to survival, there are some very important distinctions that if they're not mentioning, if people like Dave Canterbury, Goldcracker, bushcraft, aren't going over these things, then don't take their advice when it comes to survival. And that's something that's important to note too. I'm not saying that all of these survival tubers are bad. In fact, a good amount of them have really solid advice that's worth listening to in some aspect, whether that's bushcrafting, wilderness, self-reliance, or survival. But some of them definitely lean more towards bushcraft. That in survival, kind of like the unofficial motto, is that it is not about how long you can last, but how fast you can be rescued. And I think that that kind of sums up what I'm about to talk about, about in this video as a whole. But realistically, how can we take strides with our survival kits, with our survival thinking, our mindsets, not to orient those types of survival priorities towards a living forever out in the wilderness, but how can we make a redundant system that is focused on getting the attention of people around you, getting out of the environment that you are in, and really putting your focus on how fast can I be rescued as opposed to how long can I last? Because when I came into survival, especially like wilderness survival kind of education and understanding, a lot of it placed a very heavy emphasis on how can you last the longest or survive for an indefinite amount of time in the wilderness. And you even see TV shows, once again, not saying that they're bad TV shows, but you see things like Alone, where it's no longer, you know, I'm going to survive outdoors for a few days and then get rescued. It's how how long can I last out here? And once again, it is important and it is worth noting, you know, that you want to make sure that you have tools, skills, and abilities to last outdoors, but it's not really the focus of survival. Survival's focus is having the right equipment to help you signal for rescue, get search and rescue on your location accurately, blazing trails so that people know, starting signal fires, using signal mirrors, using personal locator beacons using GPSs to help not only, once again, bring people towards you and get survival, get rescue, you know, um, or get rescued as a whole, but also how can you affect your own rescue, right? Now, once again, that may not be, it is situationally content contingent on your ability to walk out you know like if you break your leg then you are going to need to signal for help but how can you have tools on you to prevent mitigate and overall deter survival situations from happening in the beginning so anyways that is kind of the unofficial rule and motto for survival is realistically how fast can you get rescued not how long can you last in the wilderness and so i think there's a really important distinction there to be made because like i said like even um as i look back at it in my life you know uh, really excellent tv shows and once again survivor man is full of really useful tips and tricks and information but you know there was always this assumption that he was going to survive for seven days and then get rescued right well the objective is hopefully you're only out there for a day, two days, three days tops. 
All right, so that's the biggest point that I really want to hit and touch on. The next one is that once again, in kind of building off on that point of how fast can you be rescued, a lot of survivalists, especially on the YouTubes, will talk about survival packs, kits. I myself go over them as well. Um, and I try to stay as realistic as possible to what you really need to live in the wilderness. But I think there's a large emphasis placed on one, things that are gimmicky, two things that are not really robust and are not really simple or simplistic like they once again kind of gimmicky stuff that is not going to last or could be quickly degraded or damaged in a real wilderness environment and thirdly once again the survival kits are not a lot of the survival kits that people go over focus on checking off boxes and this is something that's really big and i've talked about it in other videos um to when you're vetting like survival channels is if they're just going down a list and saying okay we got food we got water we got shelter or the more common one nowadays is dave canterbury's five c's of survivability right so that's container um cover so that's container cover cutlery uh, combustion and cordage right so if people are just going like well i got the cordage i got the container i got the cutlery and you're seeing them pull out like a razor blade like a disposable razor blade like one of those box cutter ones for their cutlery don't listen to that person like at all costs avoid their advice because once again you can check a box and you can make a survival kit look really good on paper and it still be completely worthless in practice so that's where uh, um, and I'm not going to just sit here and talk about my personal survival kit or PSK here, but you want to make sure that if you are listening to people about survival kits and survival equipment as a whole, that they're not just trying to check off boxes, but that their equipment is useful, practical, and realistic. This is one reason why people continue to tell me like, oh, why don't you have a knife in this kit? You know, why don't you have this or that? And the reason why is there's no knife that in a honest to God out and out survival situation that I would trust to do everything that I need it to do that would fit inside this kit. So this kit is part of a much larger system that, you know, it has realistic, competent tools that I can use in survival. So the other one, once again, all of these points build off of each other, is the emphasis of personal locator beacons and GPSs. Now, I, I know that people are already be typing in the comment se section below that, you know, these are electronics, they go bad. And one thing I want to say is that anything here is liable to fail. Nothing here is a guarantee. I mean, even the ferrocerium rod that you see sticking out here could snap in half the moment you use it to try to strike, you know, to start a fire. So training, training training is the most important key to self-protection but at the same time too there has to be some reasonable line that we draw that like you know once again i have multiple fire starting methods i have multiple rescue navigation methods in case one fails right but i do see a stunning lack and almost like what i find the most repulsive about especially survival or self-proclaimed survivalists out there is when i talk about personal locator beacons or plbs like these people like they they shake their head at them they act like it's something that only a you know um they act like it's something that only like a civilized idiot would bring into the wilderness they act like these tools are just completely um useless and that you should never trust you know big brother to spy on you and to be completely honest um especially with things like the acr rescue link one these do not actively keep track of you so if you're worried about going on some super secret special operations mission where you need not your location to be revealed one you shouldn't be carrying your phone but two in addition to that this type of plb this one specifically is not going to be actively tracking you now there is some merit to spots and um, garments in reaches because they do anytime that they're on they are actively tracking you but something like this rescue link is a dead device until you fire until you hit the switch underneath this guy um, this is not a active hot device until you hit that switch that's underneath this protector so like this it, it just makes no sense and people like i said they sit there and they love to berate these personal locator beacons and once again i do realize they're a piece of technology they could fail but at the same time too with how little space this takes up and with how much um 
how much use it offers the potential survivor it really makes absolutely no sense why you wouldn't have something like an acr rescue link um, or why you wouldn't have a plb of some sort because personal locator beacons not only are they very effective and once again they take up a reasonably small amount of space but at the same time too like they honestly work really well and if you don't believe me there are many many stories on youtube here and on other platforms of people who have had to for whatever reason actually use their um, whether it's rescue links garmin in reaches spots they they do honestly work once again they don't work 100 of the time and they're not completely bomb proof i would never say that you know a p personal locator beacon is a full replacement for a survival kit but at the same time too if you're listening to someone and they don't tell you to go get a personal locator beacon or to have one on or in your survival kit do not listen to them at all they don't don't know what they're talking about and moreover too if they sit there and they try to berate them or say that they're useless or garbage or only for pansies or whatever i've heard so many comments like this honestly like it's astonishing um so many people have talked garbage or smack on personal locator beacons and if if you're one of those people uh, i hate to admit it but you're just dumb like you're you're not intelligent because there's really no downside to having a personal locator beacon um they're logistically speaking the pros far outweigh the cons. All right, so the next point is going to be GPSs and maps. Now, once again, GPSs are not an end-all to beat-all device, but you would genuinely be surprised how well GPSs just in general work. And honestly, this is one of those devices, GPSs in large, um, are one of those devices that, even speaking personally about myself, have prevented me from getting lost in the wilderness, have prevented me from survival situations. And that's ultimately like the key to survival. The reason we carry a GPS is, one, they are convenient, but also they do really help prevent issues from starting and honestly like if you never have to touch your survival kit ever in your entire life consider yourself fortunate right like you should never have to and so having devices like a gps that once again very similar size to this personal locator beacon takes up about as much room is about the same thickness as this plb i think it's a little bit wider this gps but at the same time too you know something like this can really help you and with my gps especially i have it set up like most of them do with bread with the breadcrumb feature which just means that if you turn this on say you're going on a new trail you've never been on and you know you can't quite remember the map or what it's supposed to look like well you have this guy that is actively backtracking you so that's something that is very in my opinion very valuable very useful and at the same time too once again it's it's all about how can you prevent getting lost in the first place and once again there's always redundancies i really like and not saying that my watch is an end all to beat all but the one feature that i do find really cool about these apple watch ultras is that they have a very similar backtrack feature that if you are in a workout if you are you know engaging like you're walking along on a trail and you get turned around this does have a specific feature you can engage or a mode that you can activate that will have you backtrack your steps or it gives you the ability to backtrack your steps so once again redundancies 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 with everything and i think that's one thing as some people just think oh well with elect oh well with electronics you need lots of redundancies right well i carry three different fire starting methods i usually carry multiple um like bladed objects like a hatchet a saw an at or sorry a hatchet a saw and a knife i carry like multiple of things that are very critical anything that's mission critical i'm going to carry multiple forms of so that i can to my best deter survival situations in the beginning so once again too there's also no replacement for paper maps the biggest disadvantage of paper maps or physical form maps is that it's hard to get them for every situation i know especially here in alaska there are so many places that are just remote and reasonably uncharted not to say that no one's ever gone there before though there are some of those places too but you know within reason there's a lot of remote and uncharted areas in alaska so sometimes things like gps's making sure that you have multiple redundant systems of gps's is the best way to go because it 
it's the only way, you know, like there's no other physical form maps that you can hold the outline trails because maybe trails don't even exist. And so that's the part that I do really like about breadcrumb features like um, the GPS is that if you do happen to go on a trail that's not very well marked, not very well indicated, you have something that can give you a trail at least to reference back to. So anyways, that's just speaking from personal experience and things that I think a lot of survivalists overlook. You know, there's a plethora of videos out there that are like 50 items to start fires, you know, 50 items to cut cordage or whatever. You know, there's a lot of these um, really good videos, honestly, about different survival stuff, but rare is the day that you actually see people talking about survival as a means to get rescued and i think that that's a very unfortunate thing and uh, that's why i try to make the videos that i do and that's why a lot of the content of my survival kits definitely has a lot of similarities like i'm not going to sit here and say that um that dave canterbury's five c's and even 10 c's of survivability are bad i think that they are good like genuinely i think the five and ten c's are a good reference point and a starting point for building a solid survival kit once again you want to keep those items realistic like you don't want one foot of paracord right you want 10 20 feet of paracord you don't want a little box cutter razor you want a full-on fixed blade full tang um, knife right so you, you want to build it with common sense implied but at the same time too uh, when it comes to it you know, there are other parts that I think are crucial because like I said, not everything is about just how long can I live in the wilderness. It's really truthfully about, you know, how fast you can get rescued. Like how fast can I affect my survival to have a search and rescue team here on top of me in as little time with as little struggle as possible. And once again, too, uh, I think it's very worth noting that carrying things like the Garmin, uh, Garmin GPSs, Sunto GPSs, uh, compasses, maps, um, and other devices. Luckily, we do live in a in a world right now that does have a lot of devices that can help give you navigation and some degree of direction when you get turned around. And I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I would never make my phone my first line of navigation, but understand that, you know, your phone has GPS, you know, antennas in it. It does have most, I should say, most phones have things like GPS antennas. They have compasses to give you orientation of your area. They can and connect to once again satellites and um, give you at least rudimentary senses of direction so while once again I wouldn't say make this my compass it can in a pinch get you out of this tricky situation and if that's what you need then honestly use it all right, guys, so that is some advice that I really don't feel like a lot of people, uh, survival tubers, talk about in on the YouTubes, but I definitely recommend, you know, making sure that you add these things to your list, make sure that you have these things in your survival setup, your system, and overall, your mindset to survival should be rescue-oriented. If you truly are about survival and not wilderness living, it really is a priority to get rescued so anyways guys as always god bless and i'm out